I've spent a lot of the last couple weeks trying to figure out what to say here on this channel because normally I like to make very positive and optimistic videos. That's what I do here. And uh, I was trying to figure out what message to share with you guys that left you feeling hopeful because that's just the sort of optimist that I normally am. But I have been really frustrated and honestly just angry and sad with this whole situation that we've been going through. And I think it's not for the same reasons that most people are in. And I want to start by saying, obviously, that I feel very privileged to be in a safe place right now and to be in a country that has health care. I have financial security and honestly, things are good for me. But what I'm really frustrated about in this situation is the multiple layers of denial that are taking place. It is mind boggling to me. And so I kind of want to unpack that. I think that a lot of people, including a lot of people in power, were completely in denial about the fact that a pandemic could happen, let alone that scientists and medical experts were saying that it was likely to happen at some point, especially if we didn't have the right safeguards in place, which no one, no one was listening to them. So of course this happened. This is, was bound to happen if we didn't do anything to prevent it. Um, that's frustrating, obviously, but what's especially frustrating is that now people realize that, people are realizing that, you know, our governments weren't listening to these experts, but no one seems to be talking about the fact that no one is listening to climate scientists and everyone is in denial about the entire problem. And I mean everyone. And I've don't mean to call you out on this, but the odds are that you're in that boat too. I was back when I was doing my master's of science in environmental science. I was studying renewable energy and I was deeply in denial about climate change. Now, I'm not saying that I didn't believe in climate change. I knew that climate change was happening and I knew that humans were causing it. I've never been in denial about that because the science is overwhelming. But I was in denial about two things that are very important. One is just the sheer scale of the issue. I mean, it is probably a lot worse than you think. It's really scary to say this and even harder to, uh, to believe it, but climate change is going to be way more deadly than COVID-19 will be. And I don't mean to underplay how serious the pandemic is because it's a pandemic and we need to do everything that we can to make sure that as many people are safe from it as possible. Um, but climate change is going to be a lot worse. And unlike a pandemic, climate change is not just going to last for a year or two. It's going to last forever. We're talking about a permanent change to the planet that we really cannot undo. And it's just going to continue getting worse until we actually do something. And then once we do fully stop emitting carbon dioxide, that change is just going to be with us for the rest of our time, like for the rest of humanity. And we're not doing anything about it. Facts often fail to get across to people when it comes to the climate, but we're probably looking at at least a four degrees Celsius rise in global temperature by the end of the century, which um, could mean a billion climate refugees around the world because people are going to be displaced from their homes because their homes will just no longer exist because they're going to be underwater or because in a lot of the world it will physically be too hot for people to live there. They will die because of the heat. There's going to be perhaps 50% less food as it becomes more difficult to produce food in times of extreme drought and flooding. And <laughs> um, there's going to be more diseases, by the way. Um, I'm worried about the pandemic, but there's going to be worse coming down the line. By 2050, scientists predict there'll be over 5 billion people reckoning with the disease malaria. There's a lot of studies that show that human aggression increases as places get hotter and um, when they're under stress, such as food stress, 
um, we're, we should expect uh, we should expect more violence in the future with climate change. Armed conflict should increase by around 10 to 20 percent with every half degree of warming. And we're going to expect several degrees of warming. By the end of the century, carbon dioxide levels could rise high enough to reduce human cognitive capacity, our ability to think, by about 21 percent. I did a whole video on that and um, that was a horrifying experience, to be honest. And if you add all of that up from an economics point of view, it's going to be way more costly and could result in a much larger uh, global recession than we're seeing now with COVID-19. So uh, if you don't care about people and you just care about money, um, this should be your top concern. <sighs> oh man. If any of this comes as a surprise to you, then I recommend reading the book The Uninhabitable Earth by David Wallace Wells. It's truly shocking, but I think everybody needs to read it, so please. So during my master's, I was in denial about climate change. I was in denial about how bad it was going to get. I honestly thought that we were making progress and that it was going to be solved eventually, somehow, by someone. And um, all I needed to do was just keep doing the work that I was doing, the, the research on, um, on renewable energy that I was doing, and uh, everything else would, would be fine. We've solved all sorts of problems in the past as humans, and we're going to solve this one. That was generally my attitude. And um, I flew to a lot of conferences, and I flew to take uh, courses on the bioeconomy. I flew a lot during my master's and I would think I was in denial about the level of impact that that had because it had a huge carbon footprint. And I also think that I was really in denial about the fact that someone was going to do something and that it was just going to get solved. I mean, we were making better and better solar panels and there were protesters that were protesting pipelines. I felt like we were making progress, but the fact is that if you add up all of the carbon dioxide that humankind has ever emitted, half of that has happened in the last 30 years in my lifetime. And that has all been since we've known about climate change. So not only have we completely failed to reach our targets of carbon reductions um, that we set in the Paris Climate Agreement, not only have we failed to reduce our emissions, our emissions have actually grown steadily every single year with the exception of the 2008 financial crisis. To make that more clear, we are increasing our carbon emissions instead of decreasing them, meaning that we're going in the opposite direction that we need to be going, and we're speeding up. <sighs> Back to this COVID-19 crisis that we're in. So I'm seeing a lot of people that are complaining about how their politicians are responding to the issue and how they're really shocked that this could have happened, that, that no one was there to protect them from this happening, and that governments weren't listening to scientists and academics on what could happen. No one was prepared. And then in the same conversation, I hear those same people start talking about how they're going to have to go and replan their vacations. And they're trying to figure out when they should rebook their flights for their trip to Mexico. And I am just flabbergasted that this is possible because I would think that by now people would start listening to scientists. Maybe it's a good time to think, hey, all of these medical professionals said that this pandemic would happen if we didn't do anything. And all of these climate scientists are saying that if we don't do anything, we're going to have an even bigger issue and no one's listening to them. That is extremely frustrating to me. Um, <sighs> I do have some hope in all of this that we can learn from this issue. I think that we have the chance to actually change the direction that we're going. Um, the ways in which we can rebuild from this crisis leave us actually potentially well positioned to make action on climate. We can rebuild our infrastructures to be more resilient and to be less reliant on fossil fuels. Now is a good time to do that. And now is the perfect time to fight for things like universal basic income, ways in which we can make sure that everyone gets access to basic needs. Um, now is also the perfect time to fight for healthcare if you're an American. Please do that. 
Um, but I hope if people can really recognize the state of denial that they were in about COVID-19, they might also, while they're doing that sort of mental and um, emotional labor, I hope they can also recognize that they're probably in denial about climate change. Uh, I think we need to have conversations about this. I think that it's extremely important and I hope you'll start some of those conversations. So please talk to people. I know that a lot of people are on the phone or on Skype or Zoom these days and I hope that you try and bring up the problem of climate and the fact that we're not doing anything about it because we're not. Sorry that this video is a little more depressing than mine normally are, um, but we need to be taking this seriously and I really feel like we're not. So please talk to people about climate change, read about climate change, and uh, wherever you are, I hope you're doing okay. I hope you're safe. Wash your hands and vote for climate. Thanks for watching.